you're going to stay another five years? You want to call your family and tell them you got five years because you refused? Or you want to come down here and roll the dice and if you don't die, you go home? And me turning to the street, I, I, I feel like that was my way of survival. Mm -hmm. Did I have a choice? Absolutely. It was either go through the abuse or go do what I have to do. The store clerk had chased us and, and tackled the guy that I was with. Mm. And I put the beer in the car, looked around, and the store clerk was on top of the guy that uh, I was with. And I uh, pulled out a, a gun and I shot him. Uh And I would love for people to hear what you're doing. How did you, how did you first, whenever you first got out, what was, where, where, what did you get into and how did that spur and lead off into all the things that you're doing right now? Sure. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that because of the way the system is structured right now, because it is punitive based and not humanizing, many people come home and this is a shortcoming of many of my people. We come home. And we have a very limited view of ourselves. Hmm. We have a limited self-esteem. Absolutely. And we have a limited perspective on who we can be and what our potential is, what the possibilities are. Yeah. Well, because you've been inside and you're a number. You're not a name. You're, not a, you're, you're, you're literally right. an animal. You're a cattle, you know. And yeah. so when you're in that for years and years and years, that's what you, you think you're nothing. You're just this If you've whatever. been told since you yeah, were this high that you're going to be absolutely. just like your uncles and you're going to go to prison one day, I mean... Right. You know, so it's not just... It's, I'm yeah. not, it's not just systemic in the sense of institutional. Mm -hmm. It's also mm -hmm. family. It's Correct. culture. Correct. It's the neighborhoods we come from. Yeah. It's school to prison pipeline. Right, right? exactly. School to prison pipeline isn't just educational. It's the experiences you have from that age to this age that guide you through that whole pipeline. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is you're never going to amount to nothing. Right. You're never going to be anything. Right. And so you behave that way. And so I would just start that by saying that a lot of us come home that way, but I did not. Mm. And that is the key, I feel, to any success that I've had thus far is that I refuse to have a self-limiting view Absolutely. of myself. I love it. I know what my potential is. Yes. I know that it's still possible and no one's going to tell me any yeah, different. Yeah, that's right. I, I sometimes do feel the pinch of I'm behind the clock. I lost 21 years of my life. Had I went into the film industry back then, I could be running a studio right now. Mm -hmm. But that's not what happened. Yeah. Nevertheless... I can still You're make there. the impact I want to make on the world. Absolutely. And, and, and it doesn't have to be limited by my circumstances. So I just want to say that. And I came home with that attitude. You just don't know what you don't know, right? So I came home and my plan was I was either going to go into Caltrans or get some other job. And I was just going to kind of work my way up into something mm -hmm. like a manager or supervisor mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. right? Um, no knock on any of those professions, but that's what I thought I was going to do. And I didn't even know that my oldest dream since I was this high yeah. working in the film industry, I didn't even know it was possible at the time. Right. About a month after I came home, a friend of mine who was at a program, I went to a transitional housing, um, cause I had been incarcerated for so long. I needed a sort of a yeah. buffer between yeah. me and, and society, uh, the whole PTSD conversation, that's another thing. But in any case, it was like a month after I came home and a friend of mine who was at the program, he said, uh, hey, you know, there's this program that is taking guys like us and girls like us and getting us jobs in the film industry. And You're as like, soon as I heard film industry, bulb, I was like, yeah, what? Right. What? <laughs> film industry? Dreams coming back. Ah, yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, <laughs> 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 <Angel sing. laughs> let me <laughs> test out this voice again just to make sure it still works. <laughs> I might have to do a rendition of Cats out right. here, you know? <laughs> Turns out I can't sing anymore. But mm. uh, in any case, I was like, I was so excited. I was like, what? Oh, man, that, that's crazy. Like, what do I have to do? He said, well, it's called Manifest Works. And... I don't know if you noticed, but Little Artie has a Manifest Works hat. Yeah. So it's very it's an it's an organization very close to my heart. Absolutely. But Manifest Works, uh, and shout out Manifest Works. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're ever interested in this, you can go to manifestworks.org, and you can apply. Anyone who is system impacted, or in in other in other ways um, marginalized, apply. Yeah. Right. Which is huge because a lot of places won't give people who've done time. You know 
any kind of job. Anything so like that, right? This here, you, here you are. You know, this company is like, yeah, System Impact. We want Bring you, them, man. Right? Like, come on over. Yeah. So and and huge. so because they because the founder Dan Siever he realized at a certain point that if you can get someone in a sustainable career. Then that's the housing. That's the that's, the that's stressors. all that's of the, the pillars. Stressors. It's yeah. all the pillars of longevity, mm -hmm. right? And he mm -hmm. got it, and so did Chip and everyone else involved in that organization. Yeah. Shout out Chip Warren. So <laughs> he told me about this program. And he said it's called Manifest Works, and they take guys and girls like us, and they they train us for positions as production assistants in the film industry. And I was like, okay, a PA, like I'm getting coffee and stuff. And he was like, yeah, it's a foot in the door, but once you're in, something. Yeah. I was like, I don't care if they want me to scoop poop. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I in don't Hollywood, care man. what I'm it get is. It. Dude, yeah. That's the most famous dog I've ever yeah. scooped poop for. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I immediately went back to my room and I got online and I applied and I went to the interview and I got in. And it was a, back then it was a 12 week program. It was Saturdays. It still is Saturdays, but now it's 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And this was in at the very beginning of 2016. So I'm in there every Saturday. I'm letting them know. They bring in guests every week, and I'm like, guys, I want this. Yeah. My catchphrase back then, I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm so hungry. I'm telling you, you put I'll me in. I'll work harder than anybody else. They yeah. can't outwork me. They yeah. don't want it more than me. I swept tears for eight cents an hour. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Mm -hmm. If you give me $15 an hour, I will do more than that. Right. Whatever you want, man. Right. Like, uh I just want to get my foot in the door and show you guys what I can do. Because again, I understood my value and I knew who I was. Yeah. I just needed someone to take the chance on me. Mm -hmm. And so it was like week seven, um, we had a guest, he's a production designer and he does a lot of big music videos. Uh, and he came in as a guest and I was saying the same old stuff I always said every week and we're leaving and we're in the parking lot and he pulls me to the side and he's like, hey, uh, I see it. Hmm. I see it in you. Not everyone in your class. By the way, everyone in my class, all film industry people. Nice. I had a very competitive class. Yeah, yeah. They're all doing good. Most of us are in the unions. Uh, very competitive class. But he was like, man, there's just something about you. I see it. And I'm shooting a music video this weekend. So if you want to come out tomorrow to Paramount Pictures, you want to take a look around? I'll show you the, the crew and the trucks and all this good stuff. And I was like, all right, great. I didn't have a car. I was still on the bus. I didn't have my own place. And I was working at Walmart, which was my first job. And I was stocking shelves. And I hated my life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hated my life. Um, yeah, it's just when you know you're not supposed to be somewhere yep. that you're supposed to be doing yep. something else, it's just yeah. not... It wasn't that I was a bad employee because I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to bring 100%. But I was bringing 100% to something I knew that was not for me, right? But I was grateful at the same time to have my first employment I've ever had in my life. So I'm working there, and I show up at Paramount, and I'm just like awestruck looking yeah. at the trucks and the people. I don't know who anybody is. I don't know at this point what the difference is between a camera guy or a, mm -hmm. or a grip or an electric, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he shows up, and he's like, hey, uh, what do you think? I was like, man, this is amazing, dude. Thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate it. And he's like, you you ready to get to work? I was like, are you serious? Oh, dude, that's so he cool. He goes, yeah, it's a job, dude. Yeah. I didn't want, I wanted to surprise you, but that's it's a job. So cool. I was like, what? He goes, I don't even know if I can pay you yet because mm -hmm. you're yeah, not I'll officially it, on the crew. I, I don't care, yeah, dude. Exactly. Like, I will do it. So for 14 hours, hmm. I busted my ass. I worked hard all day. Anything they asked. I mean, I was carrying plants. I was sweeping. I sat there for two hours on the stoops of, a, of the back lot in Paramount and I was peeling labels off of Coke bottles because of trademark yes, issues, right? Yep, yep. So I'm peeling those happy as can be, <laughs> peeling these, these yeah. labels. They ended up paying me. It was a Jennifer Lopez music video. Uh, she did a music video called Ain't Yo Mama. Mm -hmm. And I was just so excited, and I, I, but I crushed it. Just like I said, they put me on set, I killed it, so then immediately the next week they had me back, and it was a John Legend music video, mm. and then a week after that, it was a Fergie, she did this big video called MILF Money, and she had like Kim K and everybody in it, Sierra, so 
MILF money was like a five day shoot. Mm. And that was also at Paramount. It was a five day shoot. And I knew like Walmart's not going to let me take five days off. Right. They were already starting to be like, why are you mm -hmm. taking all this time off? I was always in the break room networking my ass off, like emailing, emailing, trying to get jobs, trying to get out of there every chance I got. So I knew this was going to happen and I was unhappy there. So I just, I took, took my vest chance. off. I, like, yeah, I'm, I, can't do I walked anymore. up to the manager mm -hmm. and I said, Hey, here's my vest. I'm sorry, but I got to go. Mm -hmm. I love you guys, but I got to go. Yeah. So I walked out in the middle of my shift. I didn't have a car yet. I walked my proud ass to the bus. <laughs> the bus stop was right in front of the place. Nice, nice. <laughs> and I sat there with my pride and like, oh my God, I hope I did the right thing. Right. But you know what? And this is to the mindset that I'm talking about. I understood that if I stay here in this right. job, yeah, I could probably go high at Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. I am giving myself permission to fail. Yeah. If and I it's stay okay. here. And it's okay. Yeah. But if I take this leap... I force myself to get in the water, force myself to yep. swim. I have to make this happen. Right. If if that works out, how much more rewarding is that? Exactly. So I dove in the water. Yeah. I didn't have a car yet or my own place or anything, mm -hmm. but I dove in the water. And I have not stopped swimming ever since. Yeah. It really worked out. Yeah. Because I went from music videos to commercials and then to television and to feature f films. Yeah. Right? Mostly television. And I did the PA thing for three years. A year after I graduated from Manifest Works, I joined the board of directors. And I've been on the board of directors ever since. Nice. And I go back at least once every session and I, I talk to the new class. I've taken so many under and gotten them jobs. I've sent people in yeah. and gotten them in. So I'm also a gateway for people. So many of us are in the unions now. But I was, I was a PA for three years and I did the coffee and I did the copies. I did all of it. I did the walkies, the lunches, the breakfast, the groceries. I've done it all. The quote unquote grunt work. All the yeah. grunt work, yeah. but I paid my dues Absolutely. and I worked hard. And eventually, uh, I, I knew right away that I was attracted to location scouting and location management. I just really liked the idea of, because again, I'm a master networker, yeah. politicker, yeah, right? Yeah. So I don't know how we are filming this grocery store. But I know if I had to talk to them, I think I could get us in, mm -hmm. right? That's just a skill that I have. Yeah. So I was attracted to it right away, and I found out what it was. And I had been knocking on the door for about two years with different location managers, just letting them know, hey, I want to do that. I'm yeah. interested. And finally, I was on an ABC TV show. I was working in the office, and a location manager by the name of Veronique Vowell, I don't mind saying her name here because I want to give a shout out to Veronique. <laughs> I love her so much. Veronique Vowell, who's been a location manager for 25, 30 years. Um, she has done all of the Shondaland stuff. Mm. So had a good way with murder, yeah. the Grey's Anatomy, yeah. the you know, all, all those all shows. Of it, yeah. I watch um, all of those. <laughs> right. <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, I we we hit it off. Mm -hmm. And I had and just like everybody, I had been telling her and that's the other part of this, right? When you ha when you do not have a limited view of yourself, you do not limit yourself mm -hmm. in the way that you connect with others. The ask is always there for you because you're not limited. Only a limited person would be scared to ask for something. Yeah. Because they don't feel they deserve it. Right. They're worthy of Absol it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Their value doesn't match Absolutely. to it, right? But when you have that that ownership over your value and you actually see what your worth is, you're not afraid of the ask. Correct. You understand that a no is not really a no. Exactly. It's, it's a redirection. Exactly. It's a pivot, right? And you also understand that a no is part of it. I'm going to get 999 no's until the thousandth is but a I'll yes. I'll get one. I'll get one. So I have Just to start asking pushing. now. Yep. Yep. The sooner I get to 999, yeah, the better off exactly, I am, right? So exactly. let's just get through these no's. And I understood that, and I had got so many no's. And so I just put it out there to Veronique, and she was like, I really like you. You're smart. You have a really good attitude. And that was all she said. Mm -hmm. And then like a month later, I'm doing copies or something, and I get an email, and she's like, hey, are you still interested? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. She goes, well, ironically, 
I have another show at Paramount. Mm. Again, Paramount. Yeah. It's so crazy because I've worked all the studios, but Paramount Paramount is like like my favorite. It means a lot to me, right? A lot of firsts there, Mm -hmm. you know? So she's like, I I have another show at Paramount. Why don't you come out, talk to my team? And if they like you, then I'm going to get you your union days and I'm going to bring you in. And I'm gonna bring you in. You're gonna nice. be. You're gonna be a little baby teamster. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, wow. So th- I got the interview. They liked me, and I started working with them. And it was in 2018 when I got my union days, and I became a Hollywood teamster, and an official location manager and assistant. And I've been doing it ever since. And now mm-hmm. I am what they call a key assistant location manager, which means I moved up. I'm just under her. Mm-hmm. And. I've learned so much about the job. I have a lot of responsibilities, but it's a really rewarding, great job. Yeah. But that is also, that's my job, yeah. right? And then I have all the other things that you yeah. want to talk about. Absolutely. But, yeah. Well, before we get into that, let's get some food on the table because I know it's uh, getting time for, for some food. So let me go grab that really quick and then we're going to get into all of the extra stuff that you're doing. Okay. And yeah, super <laughs> exciting. So let's go grab that right now. So Artie asked for lasagna. I've never done lasagna before, so it's my first time. So go ahead and try it. Let it. Let me know All what right. you think, Artie. Let's see what we have going what on. We got here. going on. My favorite food on the planet is Italian. Ah, well, it and is. It is lasagna it is, a good is my one. favorite out of the of Italian all of those. family. Yeah. Okay. I would say lasagna and then uh, carbonara and Ooh. then cacio e pepe. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. Is that good? Yay. Yeah, yeah first that's time really literally good. ever doing a lasagna from scratch. And so. my first time eating on camera like this, too. So <laughs> this is really great. I Tasty. love it. I you're love gonna it. going to get all the asthma. Like, you're going to get like the taste of like. <laughs> you get the, yeah, the, the ACMR or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you get the chewing. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> chewing, the lips. Mm. Awesome. When I cut through, you're going to get the fork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well i'm glad it's a hit that's good mm. we got plenty more so uh definitely don't have to keep to one slice sir thank you very um, much all right so getting into all of the extra things so i follow you on instagram and uh love watching all of the different things that you have so right now um there's three things that I for, for sure want to talk about. So one is I see that you go back into the prisons um, and do work. Talk about that experience. And first off, after doing 21 years, no one thinks like, oh, yeah, I want to go back into prison, you know. <laughs> so talk about like what made you want to go back into prison and the work you're actually doing in the prison systems right now. And then I'll talk about the other questions that I have. Okay, sure. So... <clears throat> I do go back into prison. I actually know people who go back into prison full time. Hmm. Like that's their five day a week job. Yeah. And they spent 25 years in there. (laughs) That's crazy to me. Yeah. And then, you know, so I I go back in a couple times a month. Uh, Once a month, I go in with a nonprofit called Reevolution. And we'll put a bunch of links up for everybody when when this comes out. But Reevolution... They do in-house and outside services as well. So it's like a full wraparound. Okay. And what they have in prison is they have a program called Junior Mentors. And Junior Mentors is, it's basically, it's a program where we take the vulnerable population of guys between 18 and 25, and we bring them all together, and we process with them we wow. talk to them we work it out we get into a big circle and uh, we take them through like childhood development and like really get them to have insight into mm-hmm. how they arrived where they are today in addition to that we handpick some older people older guys on the yard and these are mentors mm. and we bring them in and some of these guys have life some don't but they are very 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 processed very much 
down the road as far as like their recovery, their rehabilitation. These are really, really what people would call a model inmate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we bring them in and then they start to work with these youngsters. And a lot of them have the mentor-mentee relationship with each other. I go back inside because it's it's just very important to me. I was as 16 years old as a juvenile, tried as an adult. The youth really, really matter to me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because I understand that it's at that age it's where, where things can yes, really... absolutely. That's where your trajectory, like right. what path are you choosing? Yeah. I, do, I do other work where I try to catch them before that mm-hmm. ever happens, mm-hmm. but not as often as... I catch people on the other side right. when it's already happened. Yeah. And so everyone has a role to play. Absolutely. But, absolutely. So I go in and I'm and I'm dealing with these youngsters and it's just a really great program. And then after these young men graduate from the program, junior mentors, then they themselves will sometimes come back and then they are mentors. Oh wow. And then Full they circle. mentor the younger guys around them. So it's it's about a holding you know, it's about accountability. Yeah. It's about like having those accountability partners and things like that. It's a tremendous program, and it's highly impactful. So I go in once a month with them. Recently, I went into a prison with the Inside Out Riders, and uh, shout out Roberta from Inside <laughs> Out Riders. And it was my first time collaborating with them. She has a program where she goes in, and they write. Hmm. And, and they write a lot of things, poetry, rap essays oh that's cool it's just expression through yeah, writing yeah and um and it was really great to go in there with them and just really talk to those guys and uh me being someone who's a, from the creative side of things mm-hmm. um i was an in-prison rapper for a long time in my 20s mm. so like uh rap and poetry have always been uh, an expressive outlet for me yeah um at least they were until you know later in life but they were they were very important to me at one point in time and now that the writers are on strike in Hollywood and most of us aren't working, I have started to work with a nonprofit called the Prosecutors Alliance of California or PAC. The Prosecutors Alliance of California, what they do is they, you know, we've heard the term progressive DAs. Yes, right? yes. And we're always trying to divide ourselves and split ourselves right. with these terminologies. Right. By the way, they don't really believe that. It's, it's, but I use that because that's what people understand, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's this new generation of district attorneys and some old generation of district attorneys who have always believed the truth, which is the system as it is set up today is not set up for public safety. We think it is. Mm. And what we call justice is actually just punitive and it adds to harm, right? Justice is supposed to look like accountability. Right. But the problem with that is we also view accountability through a punitive lens. Just think in your own mind right now. Someone commits a crime. What's the first thing you think? Cuff them up, right. throw them away. Yeah. Someone, you know, does something really egregious. You know, take any example you want in the media. And the first thought in our mind is always, how do I make this person suffer? Right, right. What's the vengeance? Right, exactly. Not healing, not trying to... Yeah. Nothing, yeah. because they don't deserve right, that. Right, exactly. Right? The problem with that is that that is not actually justice. We've only been taught and conditioned that that is justice. And it does nothing to enhance public safety on any level. Again, the 70 75% who are coming home. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that someone shouldn't be removed from society for the safety of others. Absolutely. If they're at their worst and they're harming others, something has to be done with the person, right? Correct. For the safety of others. It's what happens after that. Yeah. Or before that. That really matters. And I think the before part is where a lot of people get caught up because the before part, before this ever happened, we are really hesitant to accept the responsibility and the role that we play Mm. in the problem. Because we live in a society where it's like, well, I'm not the one that did it. It's, I know plenty of people who come from the hood, mm-hmm. and they do great in life. So you had that choice, too. You don't understand that the way that you view this through the lens of vengeance and punishment, it is only contributing to the worsening of public safety. Mm-hmm. And 
you're trying to mitigate your own responsibility. Right. Because in true citizenry, all of us would step up and say, this is unacceptable. Mass incarceration truly is not working. What do we all do? Yeah. What can I do as a citizen to actually enhance public safety and lower right. crime rates? Right. But we don't ask that in this society. We're in too this country. selfish. We are. We're too selfish. And we've been conditioned that way. And yeah. some people would say that's just a product of capitalism. Some people would, you know. Right. Great. W whatever it is, it's what's it's happening. Still, exactly. And, so, yeah. yeah. And and so this this organization, what they are doing is they are trying to shape policy and they're trying to activate district attorneys and empower district attorneys who are seen through the lens of here's how we genuinely enhance public safety. Mm -hmm. If someone comes in front of me and I see that they need to be removed from society, what else can happen so I can ensure that they're not just sitting on their bunk for five years? Exactly. Is there an alternative to incarceration? Right. Is there right. a, something that, is this a, really a mental health situation? Is this someone in their addiction? Is there something else that they need that I, as a district attorney, have the power to influence and actually enact real change That's in huge. this person, right? I love it. It's, it's a fantastic yeah, organization. I love it. And what I've been doing for them is I've been coordinating visits, uh, and we just had our first visit with district attorneys to take them into prisons hmm. so they can meet the men. I, I want to go into the women's prisons too, so I'm not trying to leave yeah, out the women yeah, yeah. at all. You know, I'm glad I'm glad to hear that because the, 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 I had a women woman. are overlooked yeah, that's exactly so much. It. That's exactly, and it. I'm not down with that. Yeah, so. <laughs> very much <laughs> so. In the prisons, they always get like the secondhand stuff, and so it's good to know that you're thinking about. Absolutely, them, so. I, I definitely want. Mm -hmm. They, they are just as much a part of the conversation as anybody else. And I'm always going to do what I can yeah. to to put that at the forefront. Yeah. So I'm taking them in. And basically, this is a situation where when as a district attorney, imagine what they saw when they ran into me at 16. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming into the courtroom for the first time on a second degree murder and attempted robbery, having no remorse, having no compassion, wanting to die resenting the world imagine the face that they were faced with in that courtroom yeah that's all they remember yeah true true they don't know me today true they didn't know me 20 years later when i started to turn my life around right like they didn't even know that was possible because that's all they've ever seen is the worst event in someone's life a snapshot of a person yeah a moment yeah right and i'm not I'm not even saying that, that that's their fault or that there's something wrong with them. What I'm saying is that even they've been limited by the system. Oh, absolutely. And the access that they have to the full scope of humanity of another person. And therefore, you're doing half of a job. You're doing a job based on half of the information. Right, right. right? If you had the totality, if you go 20 years down the road and you see what is possible when someone is incentivized and they actually make that change, then you might start to think, I know what I'm seeing right now in front of me is a tattooed face person that just keeps coming in and out all the time from breaking in the houses or whatnot. Right, right. I know what I'm seeing right now, but I know what's possible. How can I start to sh uh, steer and shift this person yeah, into that direction, yeah, right? Yeah. Large conversations. These are big topics. Yeah. No one has a fail safe, broad stroke solution. I don't claim to have one either. What I do claim, though, is that nothing is ever going to happen until we're all sharing the same space. And acknowledging the problem mm -hmm. and recognizing that the solution is found together correct in the unlikeliest of allies correct so that's what these visits are all about I love it we go in we meet with them it was it went so well it was so transformational because the guys that we're meeting are just amazing yeah they, yeah. they, they are and the problem is they're still there yeah imagine that imagine a world where you actually fundamentally change your life and, and that's when you're done. Ex yeah, exactly. You don't have to do 15, 20 more. Yeah. You're just done at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the mechanism for deciding that for someone, right? Correct, correct. There are things that are missing. Even on my end of it, where I'm advocating for the release of such people, even I would have to say, I, don't, I know there's no mechanism in place right now that would just let someone mm -hmm. go through that process. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that. But part of the acknowledgement is, come in the room and like let's, let's figure fight, it let's, out yeah together. exactly exactly so so that's what i'm doing for them and yeah it's just that's I, I have i have these partnerships with these nonprofits because for me it's just and you asked why i go back 
I, I cannot forget where I came from mm. and I can't forget the people I left behind. Yes. That, that old black man I was talking about with the white hair, yeah. the wise man that I would chase on the yard for his wisdom, he's in there right now. Mm. He's still there. He was ready decades before I was. Yeah. Yeah. And for whatever circumstance, he is not free. So what would it look like for me to just go on and live my life, a Hollywood lifestyle, mm. and forget about that man? I can't do it. My integrity won't allow it. That is so My beautiful. principles won't allow it. Yeah. I, I am here, and every time I come on a podcast or I succeed in something, you have to understand what I'm trying to do with this movement, with this brand, Lessons from a Lifer, I'm trying to get people to see people like him. Yeah, I'm absolutely. trying to see, let them hear his yes, voice. Yes, yes. 90% of the things that I'm saying to you all were not self-generated. 90% of this stuff I got on the yard from these men. These are concepts that we would talk about and we'd go deep on. And they, they, we would delve into and they instilled these things in me. Mm-hmm. The other 10%, yeah, I can make up some good stuff. You know, I can, I, I can <laughs> yeah. be very original. Got my skills, yeah. Right? Yeah. Especially in my communication mm -hmm. sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. But at the heart, these concepts are universal, and they're shared by many long-term people. You just never see them, and you never hear their voice. So I am all about promoting that, and I go back because I want them to know I still see them. I still hear them. I want them to know the work I'm doing for them. And also, for me, it's the best form of therapy. Yeah. Every time I go in and I talk to these guys and I and I share space, I cannot lie to these guys. I can say whatever I want to the rest of the world, but I am my most authentic, genuine self with these men just yeah. because of the circumstances. Yeah. Because we shared such trauma, it's hard to move on from life and, and move on from an experience like that and then just disconnect the bond. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like going home for me. I know how that sounds, but it's very grounding. And yeah, so I, I, I come out of there and I'm like, all right, I'm refreshed. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I know why my purpose is reinvigorated. Yeah, yeah. The fire's yeah. relit. It's still going. Or if it was lit, it's, it's, it's a flame higher, again. Yeah, I, exactly, I got yeah. gassed up. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so that's kind of why I go back inside. And it's just, I love it. it's very meaningful. You have to have your passion and you have to have your purpose. And my passion is for filmmaking and, and all these other great things. But my purpose is to be a voice for the voiceless. Mm, beautiful. Mm. Yeah, that is so, so powerful. I love that. So tell me um, a little bit about Little Artie and uh, what is this new uh, adventure that you have uh, gone into? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have met so many people uh, based off of this platform that I'm creating, there's. I was trying to think about like, what would be the best way to be a bridge in this world, hmm. right? The first thing that I was going to do when I came home was that I was going to, I was just going to live my life as a free man. I wasn't necessarily going to be a hardcore act advocate or I wasn't going to be as out front as I am today. Mm-hmm. What I started to realize was that very early on, I started to realize that one, a lot of these nonprofits are exploitative. Mm. And I don't, I'm not saying that in a sinister way they intend to be. What I'm saying is that they receive a lot of grants and funding and things like that of that nature based off of the stories and the experiences right. of those directly Correct. impacted. And I'm talking also about victims of crime and survivors of crime correct not just those who have harmed right so i started to realize that early on and you're just i was so grateful when i came home for my freedom that i was just willing to do anything you could ask me to go and, and tell that's my story most guys and, that come out are doing yeah that as well i'm just too. so grateful yeah. but i very early on i started to realize like the benefits here are mismatched mm-hmm and I started to understand that, and, and this is how I started to have a little bit of compassion for them. I started to realize that they don't even understand that every time they ask me to tell my story, they're asking me to tap into my trauma. Right. You're asking me to right. go to a very hurt, deep, deeply hurt place. 
And a person that I'm not anymore. A person know? I'm not yeah. anymore. And you're and you're and you want me to tell my story. Right. And in exchange for that, I can't even get fifty dollars to get myself there and back. Mm -hmm. Right. And then if I speak up for myself and I say, "Hey, you know, I see a lot of other experts that are doing uh, that are in speakers bureaus, and they're getting paid X amount of dollars for speaking fees and speaking engagements." As experts, but you're not asking, or you're not giving me anything. You're not even offering me yeah, yeah, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. If I even speak up for myself in that way, then the implication is, oh, this is about personal enrichment, and it's just about making yourself famous, and this is not, you know, we do this work just to do the work, mm -hmm. and it's not about those things. I don't care about the money. Right. What I care about is the choice. And you valuing me as well. I, I, mean, I need to know that. It's huge. Yeah. I simply want the offer to be made, and I want the power to choose whether I accept it or I don't. That's all I'm asking. I'm talking about. I'm talking about real freedom. Yeah. And real. If you really want to, if you really want to, um, the word I'm thinking about, uh, like if you really want to develop someone who's new to society, these are the things that you start with. Like, hey, you have value, man. Mm -hmm. Your story really matters, right. and it has tremendous value. Don't let someone take that away from you. That would be the first thing a nonprofit should be saying to you. Mm -hmm. And that starts with us yeah. as the nonprofit. So here's what we do for yeah, our speakers yeah. or for yeah. people that we, you know, it, it could be like that kind of relationship. It's happening more and more now because there's more and more of us who are speaking up on it. But when I said it, it was a problem. Mm. And I lost some relationships in nonprofits based on that. And... It hurts, you know. I, some of these friends, I, I really, I really had a lot of respect for, and I love right. them. But I also understand that sometimes this is the cost of of standing for up Advocating for what I believe for yourself, is yes, yeah. absolutely. And not only that, but other people are looking to my example. Exactly. And so if they see me doing these things, the first thing they're going to think is it's okay for them. Mm -hmm. And I just, I can't do that. I, I'm not going to do anything that adds to the harm of others. Right empowerment yes is the word i was looking yes. for and i am all about the empowerment of the formerly incarcerated space yeah so i started to see these things and i started to call them out and i started to realize that if i was not using my voice someone else was going to use it for mm, me yes absolutely uh, and and i'm just going to say it uh left wing progressive often white or maybe not mm -hmm. but progressive left leaning uh, advocates, allies, with no direct lived experiences. Some celebrities, some not, mm -hmm. right? Some real big celebrities. Mm -hmm. We don't have to name. Yeah, oh no. Yeah. But I would see them on panels and I would see formerly incarcerated people on the same panel and they would be the last ones to speak. And they would have to wait because this really high-end celebrity would obviously have the mic first, obviously. Yeah. And this person who has who actually lived this yeah, experience. Yeah, has the knowledge and everything. Once again, had to be second classed and right. wait in line for their turn to speak. Mm -hmm. The rest of the room, I realized, and this is where the compassion came from, I understood that most of these people, they didn't even realize that's what they were doing to us. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand that's how they were making me feel. Right. You're just second classing me again. Mm -hmm. You're making me feel othered. You're mm -hmm. making me feel like I'm not an equal in the space. Yeah. I don't belong, right? I've been feeling that my whole life. So if you make me feel that way, I know what I'm feeling because people made me feel that way my whole life. And you can't gaslight me and you can't reason that away. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I, so I was like, I can't just be quiet anymore and live my life. I wrote an article called The Unseen Shackles and I called it out. Yeah. The Unseen Shackles. Yeah. The shackles I still, still have on me because by. of these things, mm -hmm. right? And it was really, I was trying to call forward individuals in the space allies in particular i was trying to call yeah. them forward like guys girls people humans yeah this is what you are doing whenever you whenever you move forward with someone like myself mm -hmm. in the process of trying to do good you can actually do a lot more harm oh, absolutely because you're you don't really understand the population and, and so you're not when, trying to have those key key conversations to try and understand before you put them in a situation either you're not you just audit, you just bring your own ideals to the plate and just say like this is the way it's going to be not realizing that this can cause more trauma and harm that you're doing exactly and and the thing about trauma is it 
it's not always so blatantly obvious. It's mm-hmm. not always a punch in the face. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times it's a cutting remark or yeah. it's it's being neglected in some way. And and how neglected would someone feel if they serve 30 years in prison and they're sitting on a panel and they're the last ones to speak about what it means to be incarcerated or what it feels like? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I called these things out, made a lot of new friends who were like basically – a lot of formerly incarcerated people sent me messages and they were like, man, this is so amazing. Like Mm -hmm. we have wanted people, someone to say this for so long. Many people in the nonprofit space were like, this is great. Everyone needs to read this article. And then I lost some friends Mm -hmm. over it. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, It's, it's the nature of it. Yeah. Right. It happens. (laughs) It's just the way it works and it's all good. Like the work continues. Mm -hmm. And also you don't have to agree with me. Exactly. That's the thing. We're all in the journey. Exactly. We talked about the journey. So it's, it's good, man. And, and, and here's, and for the record, I don't cancel anybody. So same. I'm not a part of the cancel culture. You and I do not have to agree on every point to maintain a friendship. Exactly. Exactly. I had, there are people I haven't spoken to in three, four years. If they called me right now and they said, I need you. What, let's talk. What do you exactly. want to do? Because yeah. I'm not going to cancel you just because you see the world in a different way. Yep. That's what's been happening to us the whole time. Mm. Right? So so anyway, I, I came out of my shell and I was like, it went from that article to, I was like, I wonder how I can really, I, I wrote that article from a position of resentment and anger. Mm-hmm. And very quickly, I started to understand like, this is not the way to bridge the gap. The yeah, gap. Yeah. This is not the way to connect what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. and our experiences to hearts and minds. Because mm-hmm. I don't really resent that celebrity. And I don't want to push that celebrity away. The celebrity is trying to do, they are trying to help. And what I'm doing right now is not necessarily bridging the gap. I want them to have an understanding. Mm-hmm. So that but, they can be able to advocate for the situation and have exactly, a better situation. Yeah. Exactly. But I cannot bring them closer to me if I'm already pushing right, them away right. from the b- onset. Right. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure out another way. And I was like, well, what can I create? Because I'm always creating. Yeah. What can I create that would actually bridge the gap between my heart and theirs? And I realized, oh, man, it's it's the circle. Hmm. All those times that we were in circle right, in the prison yards, right. all of us had different backgrounds. We all committed crime, but we were all there for different reasons. We all had different backgrounds. But the one thing that connected all of us was we all had a forgiveness story. We all had a traumatic story. We all had a. Uh, we all had to at some point question our beliefs or challenge our beliefs, right? We all respected leadership. We all wanted positive impact in the world. Do well, but do good. Mm -hmm. We all had these things in mind. And it was, these were the bridges. So we would go into these concepts with each other and that's what would connect us. And so I was trying to think, how do I take someone like that celebrity who's not going to go to the yard with me and sit in the circle? How do I bring them into a circle in another way? Right. And that's when I started to think, I'm going to create a a platform called Lessons from a Lifer. Because I learned a lot of lessons from those right. lifers in the circle. And basically, I'm going to distill all of the wisdom that was given to me in these circles, and I'm going to give them to the outside world as lessons. They're going to be extreme lessons, mm-hmm. but some part of it is going to resonate with these people, right? Mm-hmm. And and through that shared trauma or that shared story or whatever it is, that's how we're going we're gonna to really start to experience shared humanity. Yeah. And that's how I bring the ally closer. And then they're more willing to listen to what I have to say. And now we can actually truly collaborate to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I started to create that. And the first thing I did was I started to write a book called Lessons from a Lifer. Every chapter being a lesson. Mm -hmm. So I have a chapter on forgiveness, my self-forgiveness story. I have a chapter on insight, like my belief system. um, And and, and on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. And then I decided, okay, well, in addition to the book, I want to do a visual podcast like the one you and I are doing right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take these celebrities, uh, maybe not necessarily ones that I'm calling out in the article, right, right, right. but just celebrity in general yeah. or, or even a thought leader mm-hmm. or someone prominent. Yeah. Right. Who's never been to prison in their entire mm-hmm. life. And I'm going to sit side by side with them and we're going to have these deeper conversations. I don't want to talk about your movie. I want to talk about your trauma. Yeah. Wow. Right? And in that shared experience, 
the viewers, they get to come into the circle with us. Mm -hmm. And they get to benefit from that shared wisdom. Mm. And that's how we all get drawn in closer. So for me, Lessons from a Lifer was a magnet. Yeah. It was something bringing, bridging the gap and bringing people together. Mm -hmm. So then it went from that to that. We filmed the first episode, which is really great. And that's on my website and my Instagram. Uh, and then at some point during this whole process, a friend of mine named Christy, she had written a series called Little, The Adventures of Little Sass. Mm -hmm. And it's a children's book series. And these are great books. The Adventures of Little Sass, the main character is named Little Sass, mm -hmm. and she's wearing a cape. Yep. And every book is an adventure through an emotional uh, adventure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like a book could be about anger. Mm -hmm. Book could be about sadness, right? And it's really like, it's making it okay for people to get in touch with their exactly. emotions and to bring emotions back to the forefront, mm -hmm. especially for children. Mm -hmm. The one thing that contributed to my problems later in life was that my emotions were forced to be suppressed. Mm. I was not always allowed to express my emotions. And when I did, I was punished for it. And then if I went out to the streets, to school, to first grade, second grade, and I tried to express my emotions, I was called a sissy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was insulted. toxic masculinity type of thing? Yes, yeah. very much. Mm -hmm. So reconnecting children with their emotions and making it okay for yes. them to be expressive is the intention of this book series, and it's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, COVID happened, and she, where she was, she was feeling very isolated, mm. and a lot of people were. A lot of people, yeah, that, Especially say, during yeah. the early part of that lockdown. Yeah. You had folks like me who did eight years in solitary where I was like, this is great. I'm going to go take a walk to the beach. And mm. I had a way different response because <laughs> yeah, I knew how to handle exactly. isolation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew any lifer, anybody right. who's done any significant amount of time yeah. knows like, all right, we're basically on what I call modified program. <laughs> yeah. They were calling it a lockdown. And I was like, it's modified, modified program, program, right? Because yeah. you yeah. can still go to the store. <laughs> exactly. You know, so, yeah. so it was kind of funny back then, but but not to not to minimize to, yeah, the experience other of others others yeah. had a much more serious mm -hmm. reaction yeah, which absolutely. was i've never been this isolated mm. and it really started to feed into people who have mental health mm -hmm. or mental illnesses yeah. Yeah. Uh, issues and her in particular she just felt like i felt so alone and isolated mm -hmm. and so she, she was like Artie, i know that you've dealt with this mm -hmm. you know so what are some ways that you can cope you know and she said, you know what, I actually, I'm, I'm going to write the next book in the series and I want to create new characters and I want to tackle isolation, the emotion of it, mm -hmm. the feeling of being alone mm -hmm. or solitary. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you do it? And I said, well, I can certainly add to that conversation. Yeah. You know, so we talked about it and she would send me things and I read it and we'd have more conversations. And it took a, it took a couple years. But uh, recently we had our book launch event. Yeah, it's I official it as of May so 26. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it, so the book is called Little Artie and the Adventure of Isolation. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the Adventures of Little Sass series. Mm -hmm. And it's for any and kids of any age. We've had kids so far uh, who had it who were probably around like three. And we've had others who walked away with it and they were probably around 10. Mm -hmm. So and basically it's like a snapshot of Little Artie's life. And it takes it draws from my experiences of the isolation, but also my childhood isolation. Mm -hmm. And it kind of rolls it all into one. And it's a story about Lil Artie dealing with isolation and how he overcomes and, and deals with that yeah. with the help of everyone else. Yeah. So it's such a powerful series. Um, and and it's very much needed, you know, again, with the whole emotions and everything like that, everybody, especially for boys. It's always having to suppress those emotions, be a man, you know, all those different types of things, which causes trauma because then it's like, oh, emotions are a bad thing yeah. and it's not. And so um, I, th I love that your character was created because it's showing little boys that, hey, it's okay. Emotions yeah. are, are good and you're still masculine. You're still a man, right. even though you have emotions, you yeah, know, absolutely. and so. I think it's such a powerful series, and I just I love that when I saw um, everybody had like their little green capes on and stuff like that, like <laughs> little Artie on their at their little um, at their thing that they had to to launch the book, and so I'm I'm super excited about that. I think it's going to do um, amazing things for some kids out there um, who are um, having problems expressing their emotions, yeah, and absolutely, all that type of stuff. So that's really awesome, and it's sort of my contribution to like 
I was talking about how I work a lot with people who are post conviction and exactly this is know, the pre. This so, is pre. Exactly. Like I, you know, it's kind of my in my small way of just like getting yeah. to the kids and yeah, um, just letting them know like, hey, my generation was wrong. Mm -hmm. The generation before that was wrong when it came to all this. Yeah, it's okay to to feel your emotions. They are perfectly human and perfectly mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. They need to be expressed. They do. Even the ones that feel bad, yep. like anger yep. or sadness. There's a reason why, you know, and and, and emotions are, are a true path to enlightenment. Absolutely. Right. So Absolutely. I feel like if we can if we can instill that in our kids at an early age, mm -hmm. I mean, imagine the adults they will be. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So that's the world that I envision and I want to contribute to. And, you know, it's just a greater part of my bridge work and the things I'm trying to do today. Mm -hmm. Um I, I work with celebrities and I have a great relationship with allies today, you yeah. know, um, and nonprofits. It doesn't mean that those problems don't still exist on some level, oh, yeah. but the way that I approach them now is, is, uh, it's not hostile, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not also not necessarily me living on my knees either. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. it's assertive and I definitely stand my ground and I definitely represent my people. Not only that, but I feel like I also represent survivors of crime as well. So if I feel like they're being exploited or whatnot, then I also call that out too. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the whole thing that I think that people misunderstand is that they, they are us, mm -hmm. you know, we're all in this together. Absolutely. And the person that I harmed and his family and my family my community, my society, the whole ripple effects of yeah, my behavior right. harmed a lot of people. I cannot move forward in life and just live my life based on my own needs, my own enrichment, my own progress. On some level, a part of the apology, a part of the remorse, a part of the accountability mm -hmm. is doing work that honors the people that I harmed. Yeah, that so, making amends, yeah. That making amends. I mean, we could have oh, the whole conversation yeah, on re truly. responsibility versus accountability yeah, right yeah, now yeah. is big for me. Yeah. And I've been wanting to do this post, but I can't figure out how to do the post that's not going to be a five-minute conversation. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a tough conversation to have yeah. uh, to, to try and like limit it to a few minutes. But yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, Artie, I could literally talk to you for like five more hours on all the things that you were <laughs> doing because we didn't even like touch the surface of other stuff that you're doing i mean you you do advocacy work like no to the box um uh mm -hmm. that checking of the box which um uh you did on another podcast so make sure you guys check that out so you hear about what that's all about you're doing your own um series tv series right now um uh work uh that you're writing as well too we'll talk about that a little bit before we go to so i i am um i'm a script consultant and associate producer of a short film called the bad guy it's the bad guy short film uh, written and directed by Morgan Hammond. She's an amazing friend. And mm -hmm. shout out to the whole bad guy team. Uh, the, the project, the script, revolves around a formerly incarcerated man who comes home to a society in 1997, comes back to the town where he committed his crime, and no one likes him. Mm -hmm. And then in, and on top of that, he's facing all of the hurdles and obstacles um, of someone who's formerly incarcerated, including the loss of relationships, like his daughter wants nothing to do with him, and you know there's a lot of shame. And yeah, so it's it's a, although it's a short film, it is a really really solid glimpse at just that sliver of someone's experience. Um, and so I'm I'm attached to that project. She wrote it. I I consulted her early on and throughout the process, and it's just. It's, Are you acting in it? I did act in it. Nice. Yeah, there there was okay. this small part of this motel concierge in 1997, and he knows that that the lead is is formerly incarcerated, and he's living at his motel because that's where he paroled to, mm -hmm. like many people do. Yeah, and he just doesn't want him there, but he's also getting paid, so mm -hmm. not a very happy guy. Yeah, yeah, and. I told her, I was like, hey, you have to let me play this role. <laughs> I know this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've run I into, with him I've run into this guy many times, yeah, and yeah. I can play this guy, yeah. you know? So I had a lot of fun doing it, and, and really shout out to Morgan and, and team for allowing me to 
to actually get back to acting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was going to say, it's my back youngest, to the, the roots. oldest yeah. dream. The like, dream. Yeah. And it felt really good. Like yeah. it felt awkward at first and then I started getting comfortable and it felt really good to, to be back in front of the camera again after so many years. Mm -hmm. A lot of full circle moments for me. And I think that's the beauty of redemption and freedom Yes, is that it's never truly over and you still can live the life you want to live. Yes. And, you know, you can still experience these full circle moments, but as much as, much as I, I enjoy them, it's not necessarily about the full circle moments. Mm -hmm. That's one of the side benefits mm. of just living a good life, yeah, a yeah, solid life, yeah. you know, like a law abiding life, right? a life where you actually feel like you have responsibility to your community and your society mm -hmm. and you want to impact it in meaningful ways. And while all that's happening, you get to experience all this dope shit, yeah, yeah. you know, and that's kind of like what I've been going through and experiencing and um i have a writing partner his name is chip warren uh shout out chip and we've written uh we've written a prison tv show mm. we've written a rated r raunchy <laughs> uh comedy called tres papas and that is our joke is it's kind of like a latino hangover <laughs> in a sense uh and it, it, all of our all of our stories involve in some way are, are, are social justice tinged or criminally justice yeah, tinged yeah. Um, like our leads are formerly incarcerated people um, even the comedy that's cool you know so and we've written all these great things and that's a whole other journey yeah like traditional scripts in traditional media like mm -hmm. feature films television that has been the hardest thing ever mm. like we can get together with friends and we can create a lot of projects but actually getting a project greenlit and making it to, yeah. you know, Film Lionsgate, like going, Netflix, yeah. mm -hmm. Apple, it's the hardest walk. Yeah. But again, like I said, with the nose, I'm okay with that. It'll, something I've learned will to come embrace through. them. Yeah. Exactly. And I got to tell you right now, I'm probably at about 990. Hey, well, there we go. So I got it's about almost nine there, more. man. <laughs> Netflix is calling right I'm now right on here, your phone. man. I'm right here. I feel like that yes is just yeah, around the corner. Yeah, you know? I believe it is. But what, what yeah. my secret to success, and I will give this to anybody who asks, put your eggs in lots of baskets yes. and don't expect any of them to hatch. Mm. Expectation is the worst Killer. thing you can have. Yeah, yeah, truly, yeah, yeah. Don't truly. don't expect. Manifest. Mm. Put the eggs in there and manifest the hatching. It, it does not work to expect them to hatch. Mm. And and also you're going to get let down. So yeah. you just put your eggs in a lot of baskets. And here's the thing. Once one hatches, it feeds the other ones. Mm. Mm -hmm. It really does. You just need that one. So, yeah. so I have, uh, it's hard when people ask me like, hey, so what do you do, Artie, you know, on these podcasts? Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I wear a lot of hats exactly. these days. But it's because I'm learning to do that and to just like put all these eggs in different baskets and, right. you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So I don't know how, when you sleep or how you have any free time with all the things <laughs> that you do because it's all amazing work. But um, yeah, I, I just wish you all the best. I truly do believe Netflix is going to be on the line at any moment, <laughs> giving you this breakthrough. But um, yeah, you, I, I, I love your story. I mean, you are truly a, a, a testament of what redemption looks like and that life is not over because of a bad choice or a bad decision. I mean, look at, I mean, yes, granted, maybe you could have been somewhere even more if, if you didn't choose a path, but I mean, look right. at what, where you are now and all the opportunities that you have because you believe in who you're, who you are and know that my past doesn't define my future. And um, I really hope that people who are watching this can really be able to take that in and absorb that. You have so many nuggets of wisdom um, that you shared um, on this. And I just, I thank you so much for, for sharing your, your story as hard as it was um, to be able to do that. I appreciate you sharing where you were to be able to glorify and show the amazing person you are now and the advocate that. that you are right now for the voices that are still left behind. And Knowing yeah. that they're not left behind because they have somebody like you who's speaking for them and saying, hey, no matter day. where I am, <laughs> yeah. I still have your back, you yeah. know, and I think that's so huge for hope um, for these men and women that feel like they've been left behind. You know? Absolutely, and so thank, you thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I my thank pleasure. You so much. So <laughs> I'm so glad we finally got to do. Yeah, this. I know. Me and, too. You know, shout out the locked in yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, how about you give us uh, all of your um, how the, how people can get to uh, to your website, um, your social media handles, 
um, your organization. So for many men that are about to come out or women mm -hmm. that are coming out that they want to see about um, a job opportunity in Hollywood, um, give all those social media handles right now so that we can be able to put that up. Okay, so you can, on social, you can find me at, I'm mostly active on Instagram, so you can find me at the Artie Gonzalez. My website is artiegonzalez.com. Uh, as far as nonprofits go, I, talk, I talked about Manifest Works. Mm -hmm. So that's at manifestworks, uh, manifestworks.org. Reevolution is reevolutiongroup.org, I believe. And the Prosecutors Alliance of California, I mean, you yeah. can just Google them and then yeah. that'll come up. But definitely, if you can, hit all three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, see how you can donate, how you can contribute. Absolutely. Three really great organizations and they they always can use more help mm -hmm. so definitely do that uh in terms of like if you know someone that you want to put into the film industry or you think would be great just dm me i i get everything on instagram i i typically do respond assuming you're not a bot or some yeah, kind of like yeah. russian model or something <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm very likely to answer and uh i'm always happy to sort of just even guide someone i don't know at all mm -hmm. like what I I may not know you, but I know that you want it if you're DMing me. Mm -hmm. So if you DM me, I'm gonna try to get you through, and I'm always just looking to connect and make new friends. Um, but more importantly, I think I just want to say to everybody, whatever you think about yourself right now, it's not enough. Mm. There's more to it. There's a lot more to it, and you're worth more, a lot more than you think you are. But the value that you do see in yourself right now is everything. Like see the value in yourself mm -hmm. only then are you going to be able to see the value in others only then is it going to matter so i don't know how you are going to touch the world but i know that you are meant to positively impact the world and if you're someone who's living that lifestyle right now and you see this i just want you to know i've been to the end of the rainbow there's no pot of gold mm. there's no pot of gold but you do you until you're ready to until you're ready to make a change and when you are Come hit me up. One thing I'm never going to do is close the door on anybody. Yeah, that's so huge. I'm ready when you are. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Take him up on it, guys. Man, I'm <laughs> serious. This guy's amazing. And where can people be able to get the the art little arty book as well as the book that you've written as well? Where can people get that? So if you go to, uh, it's on Amazon. Okay. So if you go to Amazon and you just type in a search, Lil Artie and the Adventure of Isolation, it pops right up. Awesome. So, yeah, and definitely if you like it, leave a review because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being told that matters. So. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> support your friends, That's support right. new authors. Let's get us out there. That's right, yeah. absolutely. Thank you again, Artie, so much. I appreciate your time and um, all of the amazing things that you're doing. However, we can be able to assist. We're here for you as well, and the men and women that are behind the bars as well, too. So. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this podcast, Breaking Bread. We'll see you next time.